Hey folks and welcome back to Tully River Quail. I wanted to go over with you what we do for our hatch when we have birds coming out of the incubator. This is our incubator here and we have this middle tray that's going to be hatching here tomorrow. So I'm getting the brooder ready that we use just for the first couple days and let me explain to you why we do that. So I have this smaller brooder it's chest level. You see I have this feeder. It has a low lip so they can get in there and eat some of the feeders you get at Tractor Supply and other stuff. It's a little bit too high. And another thing I'm going to do is, well, let me just show you this. Notice how I have it filled. This is filled with a medicated 26% or higher protein medicated feed it's gmo the only time we use gmo is because you can't get non-gmo medicated by design um, we use a medicated that helps the chicks go through their chickhood illnesses and prevent them from getting bad illnesses as they get older like coccidosis and stuff so let me just show you what we use we have this drawer liner and underneath the drawer liner we'll use blue paper towels or we'll use this drawer liner or I'm sorry an absorbent pad just to keep the water down so that they're not walking around in wet poo um, you'll notice in our brooder that we're also using drawer liner that has little holes in it so as this gets filled up if I had 200 birds in here this would get a little dirty after a period of time so I have other sections cut that I can just put right over top of that, give them a clean space so they don't get nasty feet. Um, you'll see I have two 100 watt ceramic bulbs, about oh, seven, eight inches up. And that gives me about a 100 degree, 110 degree spot, about as big as my palm. So you'll see the birds kind of position themselves right around here in the very beginning, or right around here. All right, so when I take them out of the incubator, especially when I have a large hatch, I'll put like the first batch down around here, and then I'll have a drinker already in there um, filled so that these guys will kind of stay in this area. Now I have a little lid that goes over top of this so that, that gives them a little bit of area for quiet. It also keeps any predators or anything because I have a screen that goes over top of this. From getting in here but since this is in my shop and the shop is closed and locked it doesn't really um, have any issues uh, so another thing about this is you want to keep this filled if you have really small chicks now our jumbo chicks usually aren't small enough but sometimes they can actually climb in this feed area and uh, get inside here so if this is full they can't do that I mean but there has been times when I've found the chicken there so you want to make sure you look you can get this GQF feeder from uh, Lion Country Supply. They have the best price. So I have two sections, basically, you know, right and the left side. It allows me to put in a, a spacer here. If I want to block them off, I have a space spacer cut that I can put right in here. That allows me to catch them, allows me to section them off and do whatever. Um, sometimes I'll also put an accessory light on there if it's really cold out, like when I'm hatching in January and February, I'll hang a light from one of these racks off my shelf just to give them a bigger area. Uh, so that's about it. We'll keep them on this medicated food until this is empty. So that's about four days, five days maybe. And then after that, we'll switch to a non-GMO um, we have a Tully River Quail special blend that a feed mill makes for us. So we use that and it's super nice. The birds like it and they eat it up. So anyway, that's it. We're getting ready for a hatch. Um, after we have the, the guys in there for a couple days, then I'll move them over to our brooder tower and let them grow out. This is last week's hatch. These guys are all bought. This is the week before his hatch. These guys are all bought. And in here, I'm able to adjust the height of the brooder plate. I have another ceramic heater in here. The first weeks, I also use a 
I don't know if you can see it, but a little mini fan, personal fan that's in the back there that people use to keep their fingers warm when they're typing. And I don't have that in the second. And I also keep track of the temperature. Uh, I'll use a heat gun, a handheld laser gun that I'll shoot a laser on the bottom and it will show me the temperature so I know that I'm not, not overheating them. And that's a really good piece of equipment to have when you're dealing with chicks. Um, you want to be very careful you're not overheating them. And it's a good way to test your incubator. It's a good way to test different areas, hot spots, things like that. So having one of those and having a couple little mini thermometers, um, digital ones, uh, you'll see I have one on this plate. I have one also in my in my uh, incubator tray, my hatching box tray. So uh, let me tell you another thing. Uh, one of the things we use, so this is a tray that I made and I'll take out this turning rack with the motor and then I'll put in one of these I guess air filters and this matches my trays of 16 by 20 by 1 inch and this gives a good footing allows me to position the eggs it fits right in my trays and it allows me to be to clean things a little bit better but it's kind of like imitation nest material that the air can go through so I use that in my hatching boxes when I take out the the turning tray turning mechanism and that seems to help keep everything clean um, after these are used once or twice they get dirty so I throw them away uh, another thing let me tell you I use a 50% um, Listerine and water and I wipe down everything I vacuum this wooden box out I wipe it all down with that mixture I clean all of the the feeders the waters anything that can possibly touch um, same thing with the tray when I do the hatching tray I wipe all that down I mean, I want them to start their life with only the bacteria they brought into it. <laughs> so, anyway, that's how we do it here at Tully River Quail. Give them a week on the medicated, then after that we use our own Tully River Quail stuff. And uh, they seem to be growing out nice and healthy. Watch them watching us make this video. Say hi, dudes. Anyway, stay free over and out. Tully River Quail.